Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome back to Darling Borough Sci-Fi Builds. If you're into building models or props, perhaps you're into cosplay and need to create some armour or weapons, the chances are that you will need to emulate some kind of metallic finish somewhere in the creative process. Whether the effect you're looking for is heavily damaged or weathered thick armour plating or perhaps highly polished chrome or steel, the chances are that you will be looking for a specific metallic finish. In this video I'm going to be sharing different techniques I used in a recent project so that hopefully I can inspire you to create three different types of metallic finish. In my most recent project, one of the finishes I was trying to achieve was a highly polished chrome finish. If you're looking for something that's fairly quick and easy and fairly low budget, then what I would suggest is to try some chrome spray paint. In my recent project, I actually compared two different spray paints. Here's a comparison between these two. I am using the plastic coat brilliant metallic spray paint. The reason I bought it is because I was looking for a highly polished chrome finish and obviously the cap led me to believe that that was the kind of finish that I was going to be getting. However, having tested it, it's not as shiny as I was expecting. It's not as reflective and it's a little bit more dull. It's not quite the effect I was looking for. I decided to try using some alternative spray paint. This one I bought for £4.99 from Aldi here in the UK. Again, it's promising a mirror-like finish, but I thought I'd give it a test. Maybe go head to head and see what turns out the best. In order to compare each of the paints, I decided to make up some test boards using some cardboard and some plastic spoons. Using masking tape, I attached two spoons to each sheet of cardboard, making sure I noted which primer I was using for each of the tests. I used white, grey and a black satin spray paint underneath the chrome finishes. I wanted to see if that helped with the reflective properties of the chrome spray paints. In addition, as a control test, I left one of the pairs of spoons unprimed as well. I then gave each pair of spoons a coating in a different primer, making sure that they were covered evenly. Once the primers had dried, I then took it in turns to paint each one of them with a different chrome paint to see if there was any difference. And I wanted to see if it was possible to get a finish that looked like the mirror finish as promised on the lids. I also needed to find out if there was a specific formula to follow in order to get the finish that I was looking for. Now when you are coming to use any kind of spray paint, either in a tin or using an airbrush, it's always best to try and ventilate your area as best as possible. Ideally, you would have a dedicated spray booth. Unfortunately, I don't have one set up, so I'm just gonna open the door, just makes it a little bit more safe rather than inside the shed. Looking at the final results, it's actually quite surprising. I've noticed that the Easy Home Silver Paint, which is actually cheaper than the one I bought from Aldi, performed a lot better than the Plastic Coat Brilliant Metallic Finish. Overall, the Easy Home paint is a lot more reflective than the plastic coat. It's also quite surprising to note that the primer used didn't really have much of an effect. Ironically, I feel that the test piece without any primer actually performed slightly better than the others. Although it doesn't actually show particularly well on camera, there is a noticeable difference between the two finishes. Obviously these are only a comparison between two different spray paints. I am aware that there are various other brands available, some of which may or may not perform better than the ones I already have. If you are interested in seeing that in a future video, drop me a comment down below and let me know. 
perhaps I can find a sponsor who would be interested in putting forward some of this paint and I can do a really good bench test. Now if you are using spray paints um, and you've got any experience using any kind of chrome finish that comes out a little bit better than that, please by all means let me know any recommendations down below in the comments. I would be interested to know if I can get something that looks more reflective and more shiny, more mirror-like. Is anything better than anything else? Um, let me know. Having noted the results of these two paint comparisons, I've made the final decision to use the Aldi Easy Home Paint. I then used the paint and sprayed the control metal. Whilst allowing it to dry, I made a dust cover using some cardboard and my cutting mat. Hopefully, this will prevent any dust getting to the paint while it's drying. A couple of days later, it was the moment of truth. Removing the cardboard was slightly nerve-wracking. I was extremely pleased with the final outcome. The alternative spray paint I've used has actually done the job very, very well. The finish is extremely reflective and it looks amazing. As well as trying chrome spray paint, I also found this video by Mex and Monsters on how to achieve a chrome finish using graphite powder. Whilst I found that for me it didn't quite produce the highly polished chrome finish I was looking for, I did achieve a fairly well polished steel finish which again is another metallic finish that could be very applicable in certain aspects of models. This technique might be of use to you as well. As I had never tried using the graphite powder method for creating a polished steel finish, I wanted to do some experiments. I started by wiping some plastic spoons down with some isopropanol to make sure that the surface was clean and ready to be painted. I started by giving each of the spoons a base coat with each of the paints. The paints I used were the Vallejo white, black and steel paints from the model Air Range. I also wondered how pre-painting a piece to be chromed with a silver paint would work out. I will admit painting white paint on a white spoon left things incredibly difficult to see where the paint had been applied. I ended up oversaturating the paint which led to runs and blobs. It was not an ideal finish, however, as this was only a test piece, I wasn't overly concerned. I then repeated the base coat on another spoon with the steel paint. I found when I was applying the paint, it spread over the spoon like oil on water. Being a smooth, shiny plastic spoon, the paint simply had no initial adhesion. The paint I had used may have also been thinned too much before being applied to the spoon. Applying a primer first would have probably been a better idea and resolved this issue. Once I had finished with the steel paint, I then cleaned my airbrush to use the black. When I started spraying the black paint, I was quite surprised as it appeared to have a metallic sheen. Initially, I thought that there might have been some cross-contamination from the steel paint mixed in with the black. Using the airbrush, I sprayed the spoon with the black and silver mix until the spoon had been completely covered. After this, I gave my airbrush a thorough cleaning and tried applying the black again. The second application of black came out darker than the first, so I do believe that there was some cross-contamination in the airbrush previously. Once I had all four of the spoons painted, one in white, one in silver, one in a silver black mix and one in black, I then applied some gloss varnish with some thinner over all of the spoons that had been painted. 
The gloss varnish did apply a nice shiny sheen to the spoons. However, I soon realised that the spoon I had painted white simply looked like it had before I'd even started. While I was applying the gloss varnish, I also applied some to a plastic dome that I had previously sprayed with the spray paint to see how this would turn out as well. After leaving all of the painted spoons and the chrome covered plastic dome to dry, I then started to apply a graphite powder coating. Now if you are using graphite powder, it's always highly advisable to take precautions, wear gloves and certainly a mask as well as graphite powder is an incredibly fine powder and it can cause serious health concerns if you breathe it in. I used some cotton pads and I rubbed the graphite powder in, building up layer upon layer. Now I did take quite a lot of time to apply the graphite powder. This is not a technique that happens very quickly because what you want to do is really work the graphite powder in to each layer and as you add more and more graphite powder the effect becomes more noticeable. The results can vary depending on how much time and effort you actually spend on applying the graphite powder. As these were only test pieces I didn't spend a huge amount of time applying it. The spoon that I had painted with the black metallic paint turned out very effectively. It looked like a dark polished steel, almost like a gunmetal. I feel that this would be an excellent technique and an excellent finish if you are creating any kind of model props or weapons such as guns. I don't feel that there was a huge difference in the results between the spoons that I would painted with the silver and the mixed black and silver as well as the chrome plastic dome. I feel that the graphite powder simply enhanced the silver metallic of that material and it did make it look a little bit more reflective, more shiny. However, I feel that if I'd maybe applied some more buffing and some more graphite powder, I could make this look a little bit more like chrome. However, I do feel that this would be a good finish for costume armor, perhaps helmets. I know that there's a lot of people interested in creating the Mandalorian helmet, for example, which is highly reflective. And I feel that this might be a really good finish for that type of costume or prop. I feel that the spoon that I had painted with the white paint eventually turned out to be the most chrome-like and the most reflective out of all of the test pieces. Again, I feel that if I'd maybe applied more graphite powder, spent a lot more time on it, I could make it look incredibly reflective. And I do feel that there is some more work that could be done with that. I feel that the results for all of these test pieces were incredibly satisfying to see. I do feel that these techniques are ones that I will be using in the future. Certainly if I'm looking for any kind of polished uh, reflective steel or maybe hinting at a sort of chrome finish. I also feel that using the metallic paints by themselves showed a very effective way of producing a nice finish as well. Definitely if you are using any metallic paints with an airbrush Make sure that all of the models or all of the pieces that you're painting have been very, very carefully wiped down, sanded and are incredibly smooth before you use them. I would also suggest applying some primer as well as I had a lot of issues painting onto the plastic spoons by themselves. One last technique that I want to share with you is one that I used in a recent project. I needed to create some thick, heavily armoured casing pieces for the outside of a model. And I wanted it to look like thick, heavily beat up, weathered armour plating. To start with, I built the shell casing pieces using some EVA foam. After watching several cosplay and costume building channels, I realised that the foam is actually a very, very good choice. It can be easily shaped, it can be stuck together, and it can be formed into the shapes that I wanted. Once the basic structure had been completed, I then took some time and sanded everything down to make sure that everything was nice and smooth, taking away any rough edges and any gaps that weren't quite aligned. There were some gaps left at this stage, so I decided to use some filler or some decorator's cork 
and just fill those gaps. Taking the pieces inside actually gave my daughter and I a little bit of bonding time when we both worked together doing the filling of the gaps. You better not harden, because if this hardens it's all on the hand. When it comes to painting the outer casing, I have a couple of colour choices in mind. One of them is a midnight blue, which is a spray paint, and I also plan on using a metallic blue, which is a model paint. I am planning on using the Tamiya paint on top of any other paint that I use. I have done a quick test on top of a midnight blue, and as you can see, the metallic properties make this a very nice finish. The first step was to paint the base coat onto the foam. Using the midnight blue spray paint, I coated one of the larger foam casing pieces. The paint coverage was impressive and made easy work turning the blue foam blue. As I continued to paint the second piece, however, I noticed a difference in the textures between where the foam was bare and where the filler had been applied. I came to the conclusion that if I wanted a smooth, uniform finish, the best way would be to apply filler over the entire surface of the foam. To make it easier, I watered down some of the cork I had previously used and started to smooth it over the foam pieces. Once dried, the texture was much more consistent. I then gave the pieces a coat of primer before repainting them again with the midnight blue spray paint. Overall, I feel that the coat of filler over the entire foam has certainly improved the texture. Once the midnight blue spray paint had dried, it was then time to apply the Tamiya metallic paint over the top. I set up a temporary spray booth in my kitchen, mixed up some metallic blue paint and thinner and started to apply it with my airbrush. Even though the paintbrush was applying a fairly good coverage, it didn't really give me the effect I was looking for. I decided to switch tactics once again, and instead of using the airbrush, I turned to a brush to apply the paint instead. The metallic effect appeared much better using this technique instead. I pretty quickly discovered that by using a stippling effect with the metallic paint, I could achieve a worn and weathered look with several shades and variations appearing with very little effort. I must admit that the technique worked incredibly well. It actually came out better than I had planned. I felt that the technique created some very thick, heavily beat up, heavily weathered, thick armour plating pieces that would look absolutely amazing in costumes or perhaps as part of a spaceship, blast doors, and I feel that you could apply this technique to a wide range of projects. I would definitely use this technique again in the future going forward and I also plan on trying different coloured metallic paints as well to see if I can get similar results with different colour choices. So the question is do you think that these techniques will be of some help to you in one of your future projects? Do you think that you'll be able to apply these techniques in a sci-fi project, sci-fi model, perhaps some costumes if you are into cosplay or any other kind of type of model? If you do, then please let me know in the comments down below and also hit the like button on this video and share it with your friends. You can also subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you do want to help support me building this channel up and making it even better than it is now, then you can do in several different ways. Firstly, you can buy me a coffee. The link's just down there. Any small donations are very, very greatly appreciated. And any money that you donate will help towards equipment and materials, things that I will use to create further projects and obviously make more videos in the future. You can also help me by using any of my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Any tools that I have used in any of my videos, I will put a link down there. If you do go through the links and buy 
items on Amazon, then just be aware that Amazon obviously will give me a, a small commission. Again, it just helps me to build up the channel and uh, just establish myself a bit more. And lastly, as I say, don't miss out on any of the other videos that I've created as well. If you are interested in seeing some of these projects in a lot more detail, then obviously these videos here will explain my recent project, the Giver unit, and also how I've created certain aspects of them as well. Until then, enjoy yourselves, happy model building, and I'll see you again soon.